Instead of nerding out for 10 minutes about whether the Garmin Edge 840, Hammerhead Karoo 2, or Wahoo Roam V2 is the best bike computer for you, I'll tell you in a minute. Then I'll nerd out, at least a little bit. Hi, I'm Steve from In The No Cycling, the independent, ad-free, and sponsor-free YouTube channel and website for regular cycling enthusiasts like you and me who want to save time and money on the best gear to improve our cycling performance and our experience. For this review, Hammerhead and Wahoo sent me units to test. BTD, also known as Bike Tires Direct, a store I recommend that sells leading brands of everything from bikes to wheels to components, apparel, nutrition, and yes, tires, they sent me the Garmin. As with all the gear that's sent to me, I'll return it, donate it, or sell it and donate the proceeds to a cycling nonprofit when the review is done. Okay, with that out of the way, let's roll. If you want a bike computer that does most everything that most cycling enthusiasts need, it's the easiest to use and has the best display, get the Wahoo Roam V2. It just works. And if you want one that does most things well enough and some things really well, and you're willing to put in the work to choose from the many features it has, go with the Garmin Edge 840. And if you want a GPS bike computer that does things differently, and you can deal with what it doesn't do well, the Hammerhead Karoo 2 is for you. It's a work in progress. Their screen sizes are similar, and I believe the minimum you need to view GPS maps on your bike computer effectively. Their prices are the same, in the range between $400 and $450, $350 and £400, pounds, and $400 and €550. Euros. Here's a summary of how each bike computer performs and ranks against the things I find matter most in deciding between them. And while you're looking at the chart, let me tell you that you can find links to the product pages for each bike computer at stores I vetted and recommend in the description box and comments section below. When you buy gear at these stores, you also help the channel, as some of the stores pay a commission to help cover our review and technology expenses. Riding these bike computers side by side, I find the Rome V2 has the best display. And by display, I mean how well you can read it in various light conditions, how effectively it uses the screen's area or real estate to show the fields and navigation information most important to you, and how well it uses the fonts, graphics, color, and symbols to complement the numerical and graphical data. The Rome V2 does each of these things better than the others. The Garmin Edge 840 is nearly as good on pages with just numbers, but lags well behind on pages with both numbers and graphics. Its navigation page is far too cluttered in my view, and its climb page uses too much space for graphics and too little for numbers, and it has a lot of white space. Its glossy screen also gives off a lot of glare when you go through shady areas on sunny days, whereas the Rome V2's non-reflective screen has essentially none. I find the data, maps, and other information the Hammerhead Karoo 2 is trying to share very hard to see in all but the lowest light conditions, no matter what mode or backlight intensity I have the screen set to. Making things worse, the trail of my finger swipes readily shows up on the touch screen, further blocking the view. It's really a shame because the Karoo 2's screen looks great in low light situations, like in the early morning, or late afternoon, or at night, or in the woods when trees block out the sun. Unless you spend most of your time in riding in those conditions, I can't recommend buying the Crew 2 no matter what goodies it also offers. The Wahoo and Garmin bike computers have built-in light sensors and an auto brightness setting that gives me enough backlight as the light changes. This setting also improves battery life. Bottom line, I put a bike computer display at the top of the list of what matters most. The better you can see and mentally process the data you're looking for as you glance down quickly at your computer, the more valuable it is on your ride. For this review, I took the video and photos you see during my rides from a distance and angle and in a light that's very close to what my eyes experience. Setting up these bike computers is essential to get what you want from them. Honestly, it can be a bit of a task, but I don't find any of them easier or harder to set up than the others for first-time users. Garmin, Wahoo, and Hammerhead each go about the setup differently, and their approaches appear to mirror how the units work, a subject I'll discuss more in a minute. 
If you've set up pages and profiles for a recent Garmin Edge or a Hammerhead GPS cycling computer and have an online account, you can port those settings over to your new Edge 840 or Karoo 2. Wahoo doesn't offer that option. But suppose you're a first time user or are moving from a several years old Garmin Edge device to any of these three current units. In that case, the setup process involves going through menus to add or modify pages, fields, sensors, and more that you want to see on your bike computer. Frankly, the best part of setup is that you only have to deal with it for the first few weeks after you buy the computer or when you add a new sensor or if you decide to start tracking more or different things. Each computer takes a bit of learning, but none are so overwhelming or simplistic that it would bias my purchase decision for or against any of these bike computers. The Garmin Edge 840 is the easiest of the three to operate. It turns on faster, allows you to find and load up your routes more easily, moves between screens more simply using a touch screen, and works with your bike sensors and info from your phone more efficiently. As with everything about the Rome V2, it takes a streamlined approach to operation as well. It doesn't use a touch screen, but has just a few well-placed and clearly labeled buttons on the front of the bike computer that do almost everything you need during a ride. It takes longer to get the Rome V2 going, load routes, find sensors, switch between pages and the like, but it's not so much longer and doesn't slow my pace or make me impatient. You can also reduce or add the number of preset fields, which also increases or decreases the font size without adding or switching between pages. That's something the others can't do. On the other hand, I found the Hammerhead Karoo 2 operates frustratingly slowly and inconsistently. It takes a long time to turn on, and the routes I thought I had loaded into the Hammerhead website, where you need to put them, aren't always there when it comes time to ride. Climbs and routes that I either loaded or that should appear when riding without a route sometimes open up and sometimes don't. The Karoo 2's touchscreen isn't as responsive or forgiving as the Garmin. In addition to being slower to process some of your selections, I found the icons and tabs that you tap for more information within a screen aren't always large enough or spaced far enough apart to ensure my finger will land on them or tap the right one while I'm riding along. And in the most sincere way I know how, let me ask that you click the subscribe and thumbs up buttons below if you're enjoying or getting something from this review and want to see more like it. That will make sure you know when I post more cycling gear reviews like this one and help get the word out to your fellow cyclists about the channel. Thanks very much. In most situations, the key differences between the navigation performance of these bike computers is really how well you like the way they process and display the information rather than one does it much better or worse than the other. Your choice between them, therefore, really comes down to a personal preference. In my experience riding them side by side, the Rome V2 notifies you of an upcoming turn a few seconds before the others. Still, you get alerted by the Karoo 2 and Edge 840, usually in that order, in plenty of time. Each gives you an audible beep, if you have that notification turned on, and shows the turn direction, road name, and distance to the upcoming turn. The Rome V2 shows you the notification in a bright bar on whatever page you have open, moving rather than covering any existing fields. The Karoo 2 and Edge 840 will open the map page to show you the turn if you don't already have the map page open. That's something you can't do with the Wahoo. You can set the Karoo 2 so that the map page doesn't pop up, but I haven't figured out if you can do the same with the Edge 840. After you finish the turn, both the Karoo 2 and the Edge 840 will take you back to the page you had up before the notification started. The map page stays open on the Edge 840 for another few seconds after you finish your turn, longer than on the Karoo 2 and longer than I think is necessary. I want to see the power and speed I have coming out of a turn and the other data that I think is important, not to make sure that I'm on the correct street that I made the turn or was supposed to make the turn onto. While these bike computers show you the turn information in real time, the Crew 2 also puts this info in a good sized yellow bar at the bottom of the screen that gets darker from left to right 
at the same speed as you get closer to the turn. It's a pretty cool graphic actually, but would be much better if you could always see it no matter what the light conditions are. When navigating a route with the map screen open, the Wahoo Roam V2 displays a series of black chevrons, or blue ones if you're rerouting, that point you in the direction you should go. The Karoo 2 uses a yellow line or red one if you're rerouting, with the same color arrows spaced along it pointing you in the direction to go, while the Edge 840 uses a less distinctive color with a single arrow to point the way. For the way I process graphical information, the Wahoo Roam V2 shows the route far more definitively than the others. The Edge 840 map also looks a bit cluttered with all of its existing symbols and a couple of data fields you can add to see your power, your speed, or distance while you're navigating along your ride. The Wahoo and Hammerhead each give you a screen large enough to see both the map and a couple of data fields for the crew and up to four for the roam. I found the Crew 2 was more responsive and more reasonable in my rerouting trials when I purposely tried to get off track. Garmin often suggests you track back to make the turn you missed, while the Crew 2 and Roam V2 typically keep you moving forward and get you back on your route further up the road, albeit sometimes in different ways. While I didn't do any mountain biking or any navigational accuracy analysis with these bike computers, those whose reviews included that kind of testing found that the Karoo 2 was not nearly as accurate as the Edge 840 or the Rome V2, and it warned it could cause you to make wrong turns, especially on mountain bike trails. I experienced different routing and rerouting suggestions between the units on my road and gravel rides, but there were no navigational errors or anything getting me off track. Beyond displaying performance and navigational data, these bike computers increasingly offer a range of cycling-specific and ancillary features. The Garmin Edge bike computers, including the Edge 840, are the most feature-rich, though I don't find all of those features competitive or even valuable to me. But that's the thing about the range of climbing, training, social, and informational features that the Garmin offers. With all of the ones built into the bike computer and part of the broader Garmin Connect ecosystem, you may find one or two of those features or being part of the ecosystem the reason to buy the Garmin Edge 840, even if someone else wouldn't see value in those features or their ecosystem. The Garmin Edge 840, Wahoo Roam V2, and Hammerhead Karoo 2 share a few of these features. Most notably, they use software that can give you real-time data about the climbs you're doing during a ride, regardless of whether you have a route loaded or you're just free riding. While Garmin was the last to add this feature, I find its version superior. It gives you a better balanced display of more useful graphical and numerical data during the climb. For example, in addition to graphically displaying the gradients along the climb, all three cycling computers give you the remaining distance and elevation to the top and graphically show you how much of that climb you have left and at what grades. The Rome V2 will give you all that, but also allows you to select up to seven fields to show you data like how many watts you're putting out, your heart rate, and unavailable on the others, a time estimate of how much longer it will take you to, until you reach the top. The Edge 840 uses nearly half the climb screen for a map of the road you're climbing, which I think is unnecessary and a misuse of real estate on most climbs that don't have a turn in them. The other half of the screen has a small graphic of the grade profile surrounded by a lot of white space to make room for a small font display of the current gradient. The Edge 840's numerical data about the climb and a maximum of two data fields that you can add appear in either small or tiny fonts, neither of which are easy enough to lock your eyes onto when you're going hard uphill. The Karoo 2 allows you to keep your current data screen open while the climb graphic covers the lower half of the screen and its data. You can touch a screen tab to open the entire climb graphic, dominated by the climb's grade profile, with small numbers indicating the distance and elevation to the top. The Karoo 2 acted at times like it couldn't be bothered to tell me about a climb. 
On the same ascents, when the Garmin and Karoo, or just the Garmin climb page opened, the Karoo too sometimes didn't, and sometimes did. It didn't matter if the climb was listed in a preloaded route or if I did the same climb on different days with or without a route loaded. It was unpredictable. Perhaps a byproduct of its climbing software development, you can also put an elevation profile for the next two miles of your preloaded route or unprogrammed route at the bottom of one of the Wahoo data pages. You can do the same for preloaded routes on the Hammerhead Karoo 2, but neither on the Garmin Edge 840. Knowing the upcoming gradient changes before being able to see them gives me a helpful mental frame of what's ahead. I sometimes use it to plan shifts between my big and small chain rings or to end my pull before others can see the next ramp coming up. Sorry guys. I'll highlight some of the other features in this video, but I go into much more detail in my review on the In The Know Cycling website. You can find the link to that in the description box below. The Garmin Edge 840 offers you a myriad of alerts to tell you about ride safety, performance, nutrition, and more that the other bike computers don't. I especially like the sharp bend alert that would save me on many routes where I really don't know the road I'm riding. Using the Garmin Connect app, you can also set up a suite of training metrics, plans, logging tools, and complementary apps, and connections to other Garmin devices that create or suggest workouts and chart your physiology on the Edge 840 computer. While I want to test them out further, they look relatively limited for the range of cycling disciplines and events that enthusiasts ride and their ability to adapt to our individual training needs. All three of these bike computers do many things that are now basic, like Strava segments, live tracking, find a friend, and smartphone notifications. Personally, I don't use my head unit for all but phone and text notifications, and I'm frankly thinking about turning those off since I'm getting more and more that aren't time sensitive or just plain spam. You can also use the Garmin Edge 840 to inform you of things like the weather, your ride history, and your event calendar, and other things that many of my smartphone apps already do. The Garmin Edge 840 and Wahoo Roam have ample battery life for a typical 6 to 12 hour enthusiast week of riding or that long event that you may do. You'll be good no matter how many sensors you've hooked up, whether you're using navigation or not, and set the screen intensity as bright as you need it. If you plug in your Edge 840 or Roam V2 at the end of each week, that's what I do, you'll never have to worry about the battery running out for this kind of typical duration and usage pattern on these two computers. Used in the same way, the Karoo 2 is good only for about two or three rides, or about six hours. There's no auto brightness setting to turn down the intensity when you don't need it and save the battery. You can set it to battery saver mode to extend the life, but that turns off the screen except for turn-by-turn -turn navigation. To see my complete written review comparing each of these bike computers, click on the link in the description box below. I also welcome your comments about this video, and I encourage you to subscribe if you want to see more reviews like it coming up. You can also watch the ones on the screen alongside me. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.